Siamo a Hartsdale, a una trentina di chilometri a nord di New York e siamo davanti al più vecchio cimitero per cani che esiste in America. In questo cimitero, alle mie spalle, sono sepolti circa 75.000 cani e tuttora circa 600-700 cani ogni anno vengono sepolti qua. Hartsdale Pet Cemetery started uh, 110 years ago simply because uh, a veterinarian, Dr. Samuel Johnson, uh, permitted uh, one of his clients uh, who lost a dog to bury a pet in his apple orchard, which we are now. This is the oldest pet cemetery in America, and it's the second oldest uh, in the world. Uh, we are, in fact, the oldest operating cemetery uh, in the world. Uh, there was a cemetery that was started uh, in London, England. It's in Hyde Park. It started in 1888. This is the only monument that I've been able to locate uh, that is uh, an 1800 monument. Dottie, the pet of E.M. Dodge, uh, was put up shortly after her death in September of 1899. And the largest monument uh, was put up in 1917 by uh, a woman who I only know by her last name, uh, Mrs. Walsh, uh, and she chose to uh, erect uh, an elaborate mausoleum uh, for her pets. There have been uh, a number of pets that were born uh, in other countries and uh, uh, brought to uh, Hartsdale. In this case, Roma, uh, a pet that was born in 1895, and that's a year before the cemetery even started, Uh, was brought here uh, upon uh, the death of the pet in uh, 1909. Quanto costa in media avere un animale sepolto qui? The cost of burial will uh, be influenced by uh, the size of the pet that's being buried. Uh, obviously a larger pet will need a bigger plot, a bigger casket, more labor to open and close the grave. Uh, and it will also be uh, influenced by uh, the location of the lot. Some locations are uh, more or less expensive than other locations. And uh, just as in the human situation, uh, the selection of casket uh, can either be a relatively simple casket made of plywood or it can be a, uh, a heavy metal casket with a, a, a very Uh, appropriate lining to go in between it. If one were to bury a small animal the size of a cat uh, and choose the least expensive alternatives, uh, it would cost about $1,200 to do that uh, for those for the land, the casket, the labor, and so forth. Uh, a larger pet might be about $1,500, and sometimes uh, uh, the cost can get up to about $2,000 if they choose a little fancier casket. Alcune persone possono pensare che spendere 1200 o addirittura 2000 dollari per seppellire un animale domestico è un sacco di soldi. Secondo lei è ragionevole spendere questi soldi? It is a lot of money and uh, it is really up to uh, the person themselves uh, to uh, do this if they wish. I certainly do not think any ill of any person who doesn't do this. There are less expensive alternatives, such as uh, uh, individual cremation or communal cremation. Some people don't like the idea of cremation. Others don't like the, the idea of burial. But uh, that's a private choice. Uh, whatever feels best for them. Come le è venuta l'idea di scrivere un libro su come si reagisce alla perdita di un animale domestico? 20 years ago, my beloved little dog, miniature dachshund, Edelmeister uh, died very unexpectedly. He was seven, and I have two doctorates in psychology. I used to counsel in human bereavement, but I became a basket case, an emotional basket case, for a month. I could not function. After a month of real suffering, I ended up writing the book I would have wanted for myself. Gli italiani sono abituati alla New York presentata da Woody Allen con tutte le sue nevrosi e gli psicoanalisti e psicoterapeuti. Ma avere bisogno di un libro per imparare come si affronta la perdita di un cane è un'altra nevrosi dei newyorkesi? Even Woody Allen, as funny as he can be, is very serious. We have to laugh at ourselves to survive, and he has helped with that. People don't know how to cope with death. It's very frightening. The death of a beloved pet 
can can scare us or the people we're associating with and the, we don't want to face it and we're in a lot of denial we're all human there is psychology involved in some farm areas uh dogs and cats are pretty much uh left on their own and they're treated more like animals and if one dies okay it's just another animal but in urban areas we bond very closely to our pets il cimitero per tutte le creature di dio così è stato soprannominato questo cimitero alla chiesa saint andrews a Staten Island. Si tratta di una chiesa episcopale dove da questa parte ci sono le tombe di esseri umani e alle mie spalle, passato questo cancelletto, è la parte dove sono sepolti cani e gatti. Anche con i cani come con gli esseri umani c'è la tradizione in questo cimitero di aggiungere la bandiera americana accanto alla tomba. Molto spesso viene fatto nei cimiteri degli esseri umani in cui c'è la bandiera americana e qui non soltanto c'è la bandiera a stelle strisce ma anche la bandiera irlandese. E infatti non è un caso che il nome di questo cano sepolto qua sia Kelly che è chiaramente un nome di origine irlandese. Pandora e Conan sono questi i nomi di due Rottweiler di proprietà del signore e della signora Maldonado, ma adesso c'è una nuova tendenza a New York. I proprietari di cani vogliono essere sepolti a loro volta vicino ai loro animali domestici. Quindi il signore e la signora Maldonado hanno fatto richiesta di comprare dello spazio per essere tumulati in questo cimitero. Some pet owners, uh, when their time comes, choose to have their bodies cremated. Uh, and if they do that, uh, the cemetery does permit those folks uh, to either place their own human cremains in their pet's plot or occasionally uh, in a separate urn mounted on uh, the monument. I personally prefer cremation. In fact, I'm saving the cremains of my two previous dogs and uh, my instructions in my will is that they are to be mixed with my ashes and scattered somewhere special.